Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragon Talk. Here I am alone. I am Greg Tito uh, and I am joined uh, by Stephen David Wark, right? That's your middle name? Is that how you go by? That's the middle name, but uh, you know Steve is uh, the better way to go. Steve? Over, uh, over dice and whatnot. <laughs> that makes total sense. I know it's so people have uh, you know, whether it's a PH or a VEN, uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of Steve's question marks out there. <laughs> Absolutely. It's even more fun in uh, in uh, Montreal where I'm based because you have the uh, French and English. You have the Steve, Steven, Stefan. Oh, yes, Steve of course. Steve is universal, so that's how uh, that's how I roll. Nice. All right. Well, we're changing it on the fly. We actually got your name now as <laughs> Steve underneath. Perfect. <laughs> Shout out to Pelham Green for, for rolling with the punches. I love it. Uh, but you are a lead designer on a little game called Warriors of Waterdeep. Is that correct? That is... Uh, Almost entirely correct. I am a lead designer. Ah. I'm not uh, the lead designer. It's a big game with a big team. So uh, I'm the one that pops on screen to uh, to say hello to everybody. I'm uh, a, a lead designer at Ludia, and uh, I'm a narrative designer and a brand manager on this project. But I work with a team of one, two, four, five, uh, four other designers. That's awesome. Five, you count our um, yeah, five other designers. I forgot the analytics squad, which is super important. <laughs> Oh, yeah, especially for, for a mobile game uh, uh, for that type of thing. So, yeah, like, uh, why don't you give us the quick overview of what Warriors of Waterdeep is all about? I've been telling fans about it uh, here, uh, but it's always good to hear it from uh, the designer slash producer slash uh, uh, producer, uh, you know, producer's <laughs> mouth. So uh, Warriors of Waterdeep is, uh, is, is a mobile squad-based uh, dungeon crawler. You have a party of uh, four characters that you pick from a larger roster. You... Uh, Outfit them with the uh, the appropriate magical gear that you've collected over the course of your play, and then you uh, you go dungeon crawling. You have uh, individual chapter missions as part of a larger story. Are you going to uh, you know clear out uh, a not so abandoned dwarven mine? Are you going to uh, climb atop a mountain and get rid of the hobgoblins that seem to have uh, set up camp there? And uh, you can do that. Acquire more gear to improve your heroes, and then do these uh, do these challenges where you do sort of an endless mode or a gauntlet run, uh, trying to see how many rooms you can clear uh, with no healing potions or anything of the kind. So you know you want to beat your uh, your own high score. Oh, so there are healing potions in the game, but it's it's the, these gauntlet modes are ones that uh, uh, you have to do it without. Well, no, them. there's no. There are healing effects that are tied in with the characters, but there's nothing. Uh, there's there's nothing exactly like a healing. Like a okay. healing potion, but you bring your cleric, or you know your barbarian rages and heals a little, heals herself a little bit. There are ways that you can, uh, in the story mode, you know, stretch out your uh, your adventuring day, so to speak. So you're it's a it's party based. You have to recruit heroes into your party. That's right. You start off with two, and then uh, as you gain, ex oh, and in fact, you uh, you know, sort of on behalf of uh, uh, Laryl Silverhand. Because uh, she's the one who gives you the uh, gives you the missions, who sets you on your uh, on your course. Mm -hmm. As you um, as your heroes level up, as you gain uh, renown in Waterdeep, then you have the right to recruit more heroes. The usual party size is four. Uh, you get to four fairly quickly over the course of the game, uh, but you get to choose. You're always offered a choice of uh, two or three characters at a time, and you go, oh, do I want? Uh, you know, Rika the half orc barbarian. Do I want Sarvin the dragonborn ranger to join my uh, pre-existing uh, cleric and uh, and wizard party, or is there something else that comes up? So you get uh, you, you get to, you get to be in charge of what uh, what goes on. So you'll have like a, a, a you know, say ten characters to choose from, but then you uh, you know you only go with the four that you want for this mission. Exactly. That the, and sort of over the long run of the game, and we have a long list of characters that we plan on introducing over the over the course of the project. Right. Uh, so uh, right now, uh, while we're in an open beta in Canada, we have seven characters that are available, and more that are on uh, that are on the way. Our three D artists are uh, busy sculpting <laughs> and getting everything uh, up and running. That is always the thing, right? You got to get it into the art. That's awesome. Uh, so Ta you said so it's an open this team. Oh, I bet. Um, so you mentioned there's open beta uh, in Canada right now. Uh, how's that? How's that going? How are how are players responding? Players are responding uh, in great volume and great detail. They are really enjoying the game and sticking around uh, to come back day after day. The game is set up to uh, you know be playable on a bus ride, 
you have maybe you know like a 10 minute session but the our our, our players right now are stringing many 10 minute sessions together to really because they really want to get to uh, they really want to get their fill of um, of uh, dungeon crawling and, and and fighting along this uh, along this application, so it's uh, it's a lot of fun. They give us great feedback. Uh, we're listening to it all, if, where it's comes across the Twitter feed or uh, the Facebook page or direct emails. Um, they go to our website and, uh, and and send us feedback right off there. That's uh, we collect it all, we read it all, and then it helps us, you know, make sure we're uh, shaping things in the right direction. And, uh, you know, we mentioned all the analytics uh, for a, uh, a mobile game like this. It seems like that is how you'll be able to get feedback, uh, uh, even more curtail it to be like, well, hey, you know, people might not say, hey, I didn't like this feature or something like that, you know, uh, but you can see that actually happening and how many people are, are interacting with it. Yeah, that's the, that's the really the, the great thing about working in mobile games. I've worked in uh, video games for... Uh, uh, it's coming up on 16 years now, and mobile games. At least you get this direct feedback when you, if players go so far and then drop, you can, you know, look at the next day analytics or the next week's analytics and kind of figure out where and why that happened. Mm -hmm. As uh, you know, if you just made, put a game uh, and burned it onto a CD, you'd never really know after that. You just have to wait for reviews or uh, people uh, writing on message boards or game FAQs or whatever. Right, which but can be very here, qualitative. It's, like, it's that, That's more qualitative, but like, you know, you don't get that kind of quantitative feel from that kind of data. You know? Exactly, exactly. When we, and when we, uh, when we push updates, you know, that happens all live. And then we get to see if there's, you know, a, a decent uptick in the things that we're looking at. Because we want people to come back. We want people to play a lot. We want uh, people to be really happy with their spending choices and really feel like that's, uh, that's going well for them. So we look at these things really closely. We've got uh, uh, weekly reports and then daily meetings looking at all this stuff. It's pretty cool. That is really cool. You know, I, I think, you know, there's probably some people out there who'd be like, oh, that doesn't sound you know, that's similar to how my tabletop game goes, but essentially it is the dungeon master reading the room, right? You're basically seeing what people are enjoying yeah. in your game around the table and you're, you know, any good dungeon master uh, will, will, will see that feedback and some of that is, you know, spoken out loud and have someone being like, oh, I wish we were doing this instead of, you know, this or, or, or but there's also that all that, uh, uh, you know, uh, nonverbal feedback that people get from from around the table, and any, as I said, any good dungeon master will be like, oh, "Okay, that person doesn't seem as gauged. Let me see if I can engage them a little bit more." And that's essentially what you guys are doing, just writ on a much larger scale, right? <laughs> yeah, it's on a, on, a, on a different scheme. Maybe it's time to have an event. Maybe it's time to have a sale. Maybe it's time to give you know double XP when you fight with a dwarf. All kinds of ways to you know tweak uh, how people uh, engage with the game and see what they do. Yeah, exactly. That sounds pretty cool. Uh, I uh, I applaud your dungeon mastering over such a wide swath of the population. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, pretty awesome. It's fun to read all the uh, all the feedback and get the uh, and also see the complaints about people. You know, saying what when is it going to be out in, uh, worldwide? When is it going to be out in different platforms? It's uh, there's a lot of interest in. You know, That's. In the game. Those are good problems to have when people are like, when yeah. can I find out more about what the game is and I want to play it? Uh, very cool. Well, uh, so have you, you, you mentioned, I think, in your uh, bio you sent over that you've been playing Dungeons & Dragons for 25 years, if not more. Oh, way more than that. I was actually bad at math. It's been uh, 35 years since I cracked open my first uh, player's handbook. It was a cousin's, you know, on summer vacation. I look at this thing and wow. And, I wrote my first letter to TSR when I was 11 going, <laughs> hey, the Deities and Demigods book. Uh, one copy has Cthulhu in it. One copy doesn't, but you left him in the credits. What's the deal? And they wrote back. And that level of you know engagement. Uh, I love that. Uh, entertained and irritated by uh, my elementary school teachers and just you know kept me going. That's the... <laughs> <laughs> that's the hobby what was your uh i were, were you were you only reading the books or did you start playing uh with your with with peers at that time yeah i started playing started playing with my brother we set up you know the uh the lunch hour library uh D, D clubs uh i didn't read the rules super carefully i just saw there were 18s and 19s in the ability scores and i saw 20 sided dice so i started using that for character generation all kinds of things went sideways but it was pretty uh <laughs> it was pretty uh, memorable and uh yeah, you know, and then you, and I mixed basic and advanced. This was back in the day. I didn't know any better, so it just it all worked. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we hear that a lot from people who uh, uh, picked up the game kind of early on is that, you know, we didn't really know how to play, but we did it anyway. Or like we figured out how to how to make it work based on the people that we knew and everything that was there. So uh, exactly. that's part of the fun of the game, I think, at that point is is experimenting and, and figuring out which how to, how, to, how to do storytelling in that way. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's always fun to, you know, uh, find a group or find somebody uh, who will just, you know, hand you a character sheet going, okay, well, this is you, you're going to be, this is a ranger, this is how it works, be the best version of that you can be. And then you're just, you're flying with right. it. It's, uh, it's uh, pretty entertaining. Awesome. Uh, I also just love that this game is set in Waterdeep when we're, uh, so many of our players are going to be jumping into that city too. That is... Uh, that's fantastic. I mean, Waterdeep is such a, we, we wanted to find really, you know, uh, you know, the New York city of, uh, the forgotten realms. It's so fun to have everything based in there. There's so many, uh, uh, strong signature characters. Your, your home base in the, in the game is the yawning portal. So you've got Dernan looking sternly over at you over, the, <laughs> over his bar. You, uh, may from time to time, uh, have interactions, uh, menu based interactions. I don't want to oversell, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Mert, Laryl, gives you your quests and then you have the story we have you know um as you go through this uh, multi-chapter story currently we've got uh three chapters in the game and then more of that's coming out in the updates and we're uh you know seeing which bits uh are the most uh, well received everywhere honestly i think menu based interactions with merch is probably the best kind of interactions you're going to get with him <laughs> it might be the safest yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> it might be the only way he won't swindle you out of uh, all of your gold exactly uh, did you get it when you were at the uh, stream of Many Eyes down in L.A.? Uh, I was. Did you get a chance to hang out with uh, Chris Lindsay as Mert? Uh, not at, not as. Uh, I passed by the table. He was he was pretty busy. Elminster was there, so there was a lot going on, and there was, <laughs> uh, you know, and he's got a very intimidating mustache, so it was kind of hard to you know see in. But uh, I did. Uh, uh, I did manage to talk to Durnham and show him on the magical device what he might have looked like in uh, in our world and. Uh, Got a little picture in picture. He still charged me full price for the drinks, though. I thought that was what? wow, probably in character. Oh man, we gotta talk to Rudy about that. That's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a that that stream of many eyes was a fantastic experience, and it was great to have. Uh, we had a working build that we were able to, and it wasn't uh, geo locked, uh, so we was able to show people live and really get uh, a sense of what the feedback would be. And you know, uh, the first time an owlbear swipes uh knocks you halfway across the battlefield it really gets people's attention their eyes light up it was uh it was uh, uh fun to get that personal interaction metrics are cool and all that but when you get that you know over the shoulder ah uh reaction it's uh it's pretty awesome that is pretty cool and uh i love how this game too is all about uh you know tactics and figuring out what's the best uh way to solve a problem uh uh in, in on the battlefield in a way uh right i mean is that is that is that how you guys are approaching the design yeah, that's how we approached the design. We didn't want to do something where it was sort of, uh, there's a there's a light puzzle element, but we didn't want to have it to be like an absolute must have uh, magic bullet solution. You will mm. never pass this level if you do not bring the warlock. Uh, maybe the warlock is your best playstyle choice. Maybe over all the gear that you collect for each of your heroes, you have something that works really well with uh, curses and debuffs, and that's how you're going to win. Other people, by the luck of the draw and their personal play styles want to uh, uh, you know boost their uh, boost their damage stats and they won't they won't have a lot of health but they'll hit for a lot and then they'll manage their time that way so and that's and in terms of the written feedback that we've gotten that people seem to really uh, really enjoy that part you know you you get to uh, really put on your thinking cap and 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 figure out what's the best thing you can do with the uh, with the choices that you've uh, that you've made mm-hmm that point so that's a lot of fun and uh, you know i think uh, the goal was to try to get you to um um to, to emulate a little bit the tabletop experience right where oh that i had this big plan but i rolled really bad <laughs> <laughs> or the sa- you know the saving throw just didn't didn't break my way so uh what can i do now is it do i do i charge do i move backwards do i hope that uh, the wizard bails me out there's uh, lots of stuff like that i love that uh, and there's there's some like branching uh, things in the tunnel right as well. So there is some choice for the player. Is that true? Yeah, the way it's set up is uh, you uh, you go through room through room. And you have to clear the room, and then uh, in between you have um, you have a tr- you have a, a left right choice, and we give you clues that sort of a, 
uh, acquire meaning as you keep playing the game. So you'll learn to recognize, uh, you know, the symbols as part of the monster types. Of course, we, you know, we don't hide this information from you. If you looked at the tool tips on the monsters that you were fighting, you'd realize, you'd recognize that, uh, oh yeah, all the humanoids have this type of symbol and all the, uh, all the giants have this type of symbol. But also there's a little bit of a read aloud giving you a little bit of mood setting about what kind of monsters you can expect. Mm. There won't. Uh, they won't only be that type of monster coming up ahead because we don't want to give away everything. But you'll uh, recognize that, oh, you know, when it's uh, when I hear a lot of focus on chewing, maybe those are ghouls. Maybe I should. Maybe I hate ghouls. Maybe I think ghouls are easy to beat. And then you'll make your choices uh, that way. And I'm sure there's going to be players who are going to be like, oh, I'm, I have a cleric and a paladin, so I'm set up for, for fighting undead a little bit better, so we'll go that way or, or you know, other ways uh, where you know, I, uh, crowd control with my wizard or something like that might be better, so I'll go this way. Exactly. Exactly. Or, you know, if you, uh, if you uh, have a little bit of arachnophobia, <laughs> <laughs> you, might want to avoid, you might want to avoid... Uh, recognize all the, uh, all the spider signs that are around. You might want to avoid Seattle in the next few months. It's, <laughs> it's already spider season. Oh my goodness, really? Yeah, it usually is like September, October, and I swear I walked out of my house today and I got like three uh, oh. strands of, of uh, spider web in my face and I was like touched by Lulth all, all morning. Oh man, you know your tourist board keeps that off the brochure. <laughs> <laughs> they do, they do. I don't think people realize just quite how spy. It makes there be less mosquitoes. There's less bugs in in the Seattle area. I think probably because of that. But well, uh, you know, fair, you know, fair trade. Yeah, I think so. Fair I think trade. so. I mean, spiders don't usually go out and bite you, generally. But usually, usually, <laughs> not in a way that makes you slap your wrist anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so are there are there uh, trips down into uh, uh, the the underdark where you might see some some spiders in in this game? Yeah, we've uh, we, there's some cave spiders and there is a trip to the underdark that's uh, being integrated. Where even though we're in an open beta, we're still updating the game right based on feedback. So yeah. it's you know uh, as good a place to announce it as any. Really, that the uh, the next update, which is you know coming beginning of August. Uh, will include a trip to parts of the Underdark, which is an enormous place filled with a variety. And I, uh, there are things that can be done. If uh, s a couple of our fans have already uh, gone through most of the content, so they've already had little hints about which bits uh, we're going uh, we're going down and how we're going to look at it. But there's a lot to uh, there's a lot of world to cover. So uh, we'll do a little bit now, and maybe we'll do a little bit later. It all depends how uh, how things go. And how does the the kind of release schedule or or the, or the idea of uh, the continuing story of Warriors Waterdeep uh, pan out for you? What, what's what's your plans there? How much can you talk about uh, now? Not, about not as much as not as much as I would like. We have a, uh, a loosely quarterly update schedule, but if people want more characters than places, well, then maybe we'd adjust. I mean, this is where the metrics, uh, oh, metrics yeah. come in, right? Uh, if people really want uh, specific places, if we know, you know, uh, in, in discussions with you and uh, at, at Wizards, what's coming up, maybe that'll determine what, where the next place we go <laughs> is, because it's kind of cool to keep it all, you know, loosely in that ever popular present, right? I had I had fun dropping a couple of, uh, you know, Storm King's Thunder hints here and there in the script for people that would that would uh, could pick it up and it'd be nice to uh, it's always fun to keep that uh, keep all those options open for sure right and I think that's what the beauty of uh, all the D&D lore is is that you can hint at pretty much you know any story in the last uh, uh, you know 200 that you've been going through that have been awesome uh, <laughs> to be like oh what if we go there what if we go somewhere like that uh, that's that's awesome there's a, there's a lot to, to, to mine for a game like this there wow. is. Oh my goodness, so much stuff. And so many sources too, right? I mean, some of the characters uh, come from, some of the characters are invented, some of the characters came from the comic book, right? Sarvan, well, he went from two lines in Sword King's Thunder and then, you know, was featured character in the comic books. And it's fun to uh, watch these characters uh, grow in other media. <laughs> or, yeah. You know, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. It's that whole transmedia idea, right? Where you're kind of like, oh, here's this thing that's really interesting. And then, you know, here's Boba Fett. People like Boba Fett. So let's have a whole comics books about him. Or, you know, that, that like, people love that. So uh, yeah. I do too. And I like, I like ha being in the know as well. Exactly. Exactly. It's fun to keep track. So are you playing in D&D uh, 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 you know, weekly sessions now? What's... 
Yeah, we have a we have a we have a weekly game. It's been going on. Uh, we used to have tw- uh, twice weekly, and then uh, well, the work picks up. So it's once uh, it's it's uh, once a week. We're playing through uh, Storm King's uh, Storm King's Thunder. Nice. And uh, that's a lot of fun. I've been doing it for um, thirty four sessions. So it's been basically a year and a half. Wow. All right. That we- we doing so, uh, you know, a group of, a group of six of us, and we're just playing it. And so I read. Ju- I have to promise the GM, right? I read just enough for my job. <laughs> 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 Although on uh, on uh, Wednesday's game uh, on a, on our game last week, uh, I knew he mentioned something, and I knew something that I wasn't supposed to know. So I looked him dead in the eye and I said, "History check. Make me roll a history check." <laughs> And uh, thankfully, I got uh, I rolled an 18, so it was okay. I was allowed to know the thing that I knew. <laughs> nice. Yeah. What if you had failed? You'd have been like, I don't know nothing. I hear I nothing. Know. And I'm tapping it out in Morse code on the table. <laughs> Everyone. Getting ready to use the Slack channel after work. Right. Here we go. <laughs> I'm just That's saying fun. we should look for this thing. What, uh, what kind of character are you playing? Uh, I'm playing a uh, tiefling paladin named Mercy. Oh. I, it's weird. Uh... I usually don't know how to play my characters until I get some kind of enchanted item, preferably cursed or intelligent. And then it, <laughs> all of a sudden things snap into focus. So um, an old campaign I played in, I was didn't know what to do until I got a, um, uh, I got a sword of vengeance. And then I went a little crazy and it was great. For, uh, for Mercy, I got this uh, uh, early on in the campaign, I got this uh, battle axe that was sort of infused with the, the ghost of the mayor of the first town that we that we liberated, and mm-hmm. I decided that I would be uh, very interested in uh, urban renewal and urban mm-hmm. politics and making sure that uh, the infrastructure, you know, was supported uh, goodness because that's how we made. Anyways, I just started riffing on that, and that's thanks to this axe. <laughs> Defending population seemed really easy to me as a thing to conceptualize. So. The giants come in and take our granaries. Well, let's let's stop that, <laughs> and then let's help the hill giants with their food pop with their food problem. And then it, the rest of the party stares at me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say there's not very many uh, uh, gods of infrastructure in D and D. Everybody can dream, have aspirations. It's important to know. I am the goddess of of uh, government spending. <laughs> It uh, it helps that my girlfriend is a building inspector, so <laughs> I'm just used to hearing her talk about all these infrastructure things. So it just sort of pops up, going, "Oh my goodness, the drainage is not to code." Da 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 da. I, I I actually love that kind of stuff because it makes you know, I mean, uh, the heroic fantasy can sometimes hand wave the fact that there's like a working civilization that you're yeah. a part of, right? And I love the kind of simulation type games where you're like, all right, well, we have to interact with the local magistrates. We have to interact with the, with the peasantry or, you know, or things that make it feel very real because if, what are you questing for if, if not to make your civilization run better? Exactly. It's, 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 this is the piece that's being preserved, right? So you want, you want to improve it at, uh, at that level. It makes for fun, uh, fun little side encounters, I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why I, I, one of my favorite characters was a, 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 a theater producer who was going oh. around he was like he was an adventurer, but he was basically like, "All right, I'm doing research on which uh, uh, towns would be the best to take my my theater troupe when we go on tour next year, or something like that." <laughs> you know, and then oh, if I save you know the local uh, uh, you know pig that's you know tra- trapped in a well or something like that, well then they're going to buy tickets to go see my show when I come back here next year. Absolutely, right. <laughs> yeah, but the- the name recognition, that's a great, also it's a great cover story. I love it. It is a good cover story, right? Because there were so <laughs> many traveling, you know, troops and troubadours and bards of, of that time. Exactly. Yeah. Plus, I just like the idea of a working theater person being in a D&D campaign. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's a lot of showman, uh, you know, show business spells in there, right? You know, press the digitation. Yeah. You can do a lot of stuff with that. Uh, uh, an invisible servant in the right place at the right time. Can uh, can have all kinds of uh, all kinds of fun effects. I mean, not to mention just all the illusion spells that you have, right? You could basically, yeah. you know, produce an entire movie uh, or you know a, a, that kind of level of quality in illusions if you yeah. wanted to, right? That's like your You're little around. animation studio that you've got in spells. <laughs> That's my next character. It'll be uh, Pixaro. <laughs> Pix- <laughs> it. Hold on, running it down now. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you'll dungeon master that one. So, do you? Uh, so, you're a player in this campaign. Are you? Uh, have you been a dungeon master before? Do you like that role? 
I've been a dungeon master, uh, you know, back in back in the high school days where it was, you know, very fly by the seat of your pants, and I would roll dice to figure out which page of the monster manual I would turn to, and that would be the encounter. Yeah. That would be. Uh, of late, uh, I've been, you know, the 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 DM dad. So I've got my kids uh, and uh, my stepkids playing in uh, an annual summertime D and D game, and it started off as just a terrible way to teach them math. <laughs> they would roll. I would set. They have their figures and play this map. I had the old uh, 3.5 players kits. You know, the big square boxes with the dragons in it. Yeah. So they they took their miniatures and I simplified the character sheet. And I just anytime they wanted to fight, I just made them roll a dice and made them uh, add 17 to it. And if they got it right on the first time, first try, they hit. And if not, well, it took a couple of tries. And then we, that's how we worked it out. And it's expanded over, um, over the years since then. But yeah, we still have these little like note paper uh, plot lines uh, for our Heroes of Kingdom Land uh, campaign. And that's how that, uh, <laughs> that's how that works. So they started off when they were six and they've, and uh, you know, now they're uh, closer to 12 or 15. So that's how that, uh, that's how that's gone. What, what was it? Heroes of Hero Land? Uh, Heroes of Kingdom Land. Kingdom Land. <laughs> Kingdom Land. I went, oh, man. You know, straight, straight into the point. <laughs> what, what's the capital of Kingdom Land? Is it Kingdom Landberg? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I, I think it was Castle. I think it was Castle King, actually. I think that's what we decided. That Castle we King. Find. Castle King. That's, oh, who lives there? The king lives there. In his uh, castle. Yeah. yeah. I no need that. for a fancy address there. You just know. <laughs> yeah, you just know. You're like, yeah, just send just all know. my packages Amazon Prime that way. Okay, good. Uh, it's a, yeah, it, all <laughs> <out>. <laughs> it all works out that way. That's super cool. I love. I mean, I ask because you know I have my kids too, and I basically did the same thing you did, where I, I gave them a character, but it was you know a couple of numbers written down on a sheet, and I had them roll a die, and I was like, all right, that's you know above ten, you you, you succeeded, you know, yep. and uh, uh, kept them busy that way for a few minutes before they <laughs> moved on to something else. <laughs> Yeah, the kids. Uh, the kids really look forward to it. It's uh, it's you know the summertime tradition. Although they've been multi-purposing the uh, the figures and the and, and you know the library of, of game books that I've got. Uh, so they're trying to draw comics based off of it, or oh. they're using all the miniatures to play. They taught themselves how to play poker, and they were gambling with orcs. Nice. And, uh, three orcs was worth a troll. And I'm having this horrible flashback to when I cracked when I had the. Um, uh, the first edition Dungeon Master's Guide, right? There was that appendix for casino games. Yeah. At the end, thank you, thank you, Gary Gygax, for <laughs> lists of everything that you can do with herbs and everything that you can do with uh, with dice and poker cards. Right. You know, <laughs> in this game, and uh, yeah, the the wheel keeps turning. The kids. Uh, <laughs> they found that, and they're like, "We're so, running with it." Yeah, yeah, they're running. That's cool. And they're like, "This is poker hand. Be that poker hand." I'm like, "I sure. <laughs> Let's look it up in the book." And then off they go. Nice. I, uh, I, I always thought that casinos in the D&D universe should use polyhedral dice as their, their gaming no item, right? So I, I think I, I designed a little like blackjack type game that used dice uh, uh, as it was, you know, as you get in higher in variable. So, at, you know, you start off with a 1D4 and then you place bets on when you're going to uh, break 20, 21, I think is what I still was using. Oh, fun. Right. Okay. And then it gets, you know, you, you, you bid like, all right, I'm going to bid this to add a D20 to it. And then you're all right, well, that that could break you pretty easily or you might get lucky and roll roll low yeah, yeah oh, that sounds uh, that sounds awesome yeah I, fun little detail to put in i need to play test it more i don't think i quite gave it the rigorous play testing <laughs> that it should have gotten uh and maybe just because i was winning all the money so it didn't matter well yeah maybe, <laughs> maybe it, just, it just came off you know the first experience was perfect that's how you <laughs> that's how you go every game designer has that experience right we're like oh done never have to <laughs> tweak it again <laughs> I want everything. Although my personal rule is, uh, I have to be bad at the game for me to know that it's kind of done. Oh, okay. Like I like I like like people are like, oh, you made the game. Of course you know how to win. I'm like, no, I don't. There's so much more stuff to learn. Uh, either when I was doing uh, making strategy games or working on uh, you know competitive card games or or, or 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 things like that. Like you want the system to, um, for lack of a better term, to be varied and healthy and have a lot of. Um, and have a lot of uh, potential for surprise. If there's only one way to do everything, well, then that's you know was for me less uh, less interesting. So it's fun to be surprised by what uh, by what happens at the table or on the device. I think that's the I mean the tenet of good game design is that there's no one way to win. There's there's multiple paths to victory. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. yeah. 
Absolutely. And, uh, and, uh, and every game provokes a story because even if there's not a story, you know, baked into the game, the story is you talking to your friends about what happened in this game that you were playing right. and how, you know, by, by circumstance, things worked out this way and you had this, um, and you had this, uh, surprising unforeseen event and it turned out to be pretty, uh, it turned out to be pretty awesome. Right. You're like, you ordinarily, this decision I made would have been terrible, but because, you know, the dice favored me or, or whatever RNG happened and this, you know, yeah. that ends up being such a great, better story because it should not have occurred, but it did. And that's what makes games fun. Yeah. We had to run with that. Uh, there was one um, uh, in the other office campaign, there was a scenario where I was, I think, I think an elven ranger and I was in dis- I was disguised as an orc. Um no, I was disguised as a uh, something ogreish, and I didn't speak. I didn't speak orc, but fortunately, um, uh, the person who I was leading in as a pretend prisoner uh, had telepathy and did speak orc. So he was feed, listening and feeding me lines. So I had to roll. He had to roll bluff, and I had to roll performance to see if I could, you know, articulate and lip sync correctly and, and, and make this these sounds come out right. We happened to roll exactly the same number with our checks, which the the DM decided was, uh, you know, a massive success and we didn't have to do it anymore. We were just, you know, we were just in sync that way, which is, you know, pure random lunacy, but it was a lot of, uh, it made for a memorable, uh, afternoon session. That is pretty cool. So when you were in sync, were you just in Timberlake or were you <laughs> one of the other members of the band that I don't remember? Who are the other ones? Who are the other ones? Joey, 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 <laughs> that's it. Lance Bass. There we go. Hold on. <laughs> That's Ooh. three out of five. There's more. There's got to be. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm going to just imagine you were Justin Timberlake, right? There, or, cause, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Absolutely. Because uh, you were the performer. You were the one who was, who was uh, 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 having to take all the telepathy and, and, and put it out there. And uh, had to lip sync. Ooh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's what Dragon Talk is known for, is throwing shade at <laughs> Justin Timberlake go. and pop stars. <laughs> Everybody call up Rolling Stone. Uh, that's super cool. So, I mean, do you ever use some of that, uh, surprise and, and delight type of, uh, uh, moments, uh, or, you know, do you try to make the framework for that to happen within a game like Warriors of Waterdeep? And how do you, how do you do that? Well, I mean, so, uh, there's, there are, there are random chances to hit and there are random chances every time the character moves or, uh, uh, makes an attack that there might be a bonus effect that would happen. Uh, so there are chances to have critical hits with, you know, extra damage, critical misses. What I find when you're playing is you you live in anticipation for the animation to go through. And you're like, oh, thank goodness I was, you know, at such a short uh, health bar. But the but the Etten missed. Right. I get more turn. That's fantastic. Uh, so these things happen naturally in the game. And I've, you know, I have uh, complained to the system designers completely self-interestedly going, I, if it would, if I could not lose to four consecutive critical hits from the ogres, that would be great. We arrange for that to happen. And I'm told no, because that's just the way that works. Uh, but I know random number generator means random number. It could be, you know, it's too important to be left to chance though. (laughs) We have to script everything from now on. (laughs) Yeah. You know, we've all done it behind the screen. If it, Maybe, maybe you're, like, just but, you're like, but I'm on the team. So can you just put in a code that so I don't get four crits in a row? Everybody else can. Everybody else could be fine. But, you know, we open this with our thumbprints. Just saying. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> there can be personal code for me. Uh, so that kind of stuff happens. And people tell these stories that, you know, oh, if it wasn't for, you know, one unfortunate miss versus a boss or uh, thank goodness I got that um, that extra effect and the damage dealt you know, double. That's what uh, that's what got me over the hump and into the next chapter. Right. And people uh, do talk about it. We uh, we don't um, uh, we don't contribute to sort of the online chatter. Like we we keep we keep a break, but we keep our our uh, virtual ears to the ground. We see things that uh, pop up on Reddit. We see things pop up on uh, on Discord uh, and the like. And people, or you know, on our Facebook page, and people talk about those those moments, these uh, mm-hmm. these uh, improbable things. And and uh, it's it's fun to see that if it wasn't for you know giving a buff at the right time, they might not have made it uh, through the chapter. And they're really pleased with it. That's a you know it's a signature moment, and it helps uh, uh, drive their interest, and they come back the next day. 
So yeah, because that that, that's, that's that, that feels like you're you're able to play the game the way D D is supposed to be played, right? Like, you know, you're gonna get that bad hit and have your, you know, important party member, you know, be on the ground. But if you are able to have the prep you know, you prepped and had the cleric ready and then he's got the spell that he can do it, and that just feels like even though it was a a net bad and that someone was you know, unconscious in the game, it feels like you were prepared and able to, to beat the, 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 the bad guy by having the right stuff prepared. Yeah. Yeah. You have the, the right, you brought the right inventory uh, into, uh, into play with you. That's the goal. Yeah. And uh, so we, you know, we're always, we never hundred percent sure that we got it right, but that's always what we're aiming for and we're refining to make sure that uh, it comes out that way. Have so. you been seeing a lot of people, uh, play it the way you described where it's like they, 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 you know, pick it out, uh, you know, pick up their phone while they're in a queue for something or, 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 you know, just the downtime of other, you know, normal motions and times where you'll be looking at your phone. So you're on the elevator and stuff like that. Are people able to, to get a few minutes of fun D and D play in? People are able to get a few minutes of D and D fun. Now, so the people that I see are, you know, along my route. So they're, you know, colleagues who play, uh, not because we asked them to, but because they were eagerly awaiting to it. It's, it's fun. So people not on the team, but people on our, uh, you know, like on our Jurassic world team or uh, the other projects that we have at Ludia. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, you know, we've, we've met, uh, I'm a tall guy. So I'm always looking at people's phones on the subway. Going, <laughs> what are they playing? What are they playing? And one day it's going to be one of mine or one of ours and I'll be, you know, and you'd be like, oh, by the I way. I won't say anything because I'm, you know, I'll be polite about it, but I'll be like, yes. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, that was a very American thing. I was like, oh, I'd be like, by the way, I, I, I designed yeah. that game. But as a Canadian, you'd be like, oh, no, I would never say. Yeah. I would just, you know, glow a little. That's <laughs> what I, would I would just smile a little bit on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, what's the uh, uh, schedule for the next uh, couple of months for you guys? Schedule for the next. So uh, this open beta, you know, it's a it's a big game with a lot of variables. So it's uh, stretching out for, uh, you know, through the rest of the year as we uh, have regular updates for, um, uh, well, obviously bug fixes. I mean, you know, it wasn't perfect the first time it, uh, it uh, you know, hit the, hit the Google Play Store. But, um, you know, more content to test, uh, more characters uh, to play with. Uh, features get adjusted on the fly because uh, even in our uh, initial batch of numbers, we can see, you know, now we can look at trends and, 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 and uh, try some stuff out in this space. So, you know, we're, we're, still, we're still going to be in, uh, in soft launch, uh, you know, for the, pretty much the rest of the year. And then we go world and then, you know, share the fun, share the joy with everybody. That should be so fun. I can't wait. Yeah, I think I'm going to move. I love watching people play the game. It was so hard not talking about it. And then, you know, waiting for, uh, you know, you, then when the game was announced, just waiting to get it, you know, out there distributed and then start getting that feedback. You know, you want to, you made this thing and you hope that it, uh, you hope that people have as much fun with it as uh, you had uh, making it. And you want to see that it's, uh, you know, it's a viable thing. And, you know, thank goodness it's uh, been pretty well received so far. So we want to keep that going. That's good. That's good. I can't wait for the uh, for the wide release. Uh, for uh, so you're thinking 2018 for that? Is that what you're saying? Uh, very late or early 2019 or very early 2019. That's what we're we're looking at. Sweet. It's depends on how everything uh, how everything comes together. Cool. You know, the feedback that we get and how the new features are received and and all that. It's. Uh, I wish I could be like firmly declare this date but uh, there's a lot of variables that does not work in uh, uh any kind of game development whether it's tabletop uh pen and paper or uh digital <laughs> any any kind of hard schedules are very hard to come by for yep. sure uh well how can people find out about it now uh, other than moving to canada so that they can play it well uh i mean please move to canada so you can play or get yourself <laughs> a canadian uh, google play store it's really viable and it's uh oh, it's a little hot now i gotta say but uh, we have uh, our website, warriorsofwaterdeep.com, where we're uh, taking uh, pre-registrations. So they'll, we'll email you when the game is launched uh, wide. And if you pre-register, we'll be uh, giving out at the wide release a, a, a Lero Silverhand gift pack. Uh, we you know, use the metaphor of, uh, of the card packs and the treasure chest to sort of you know, tie the market together. So as a, as a thank you for pre-registering. You'll get a little something there. Uh, we have social media pages that uh, you know are increasingly uh, active on uh, on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. Uh, variations of Warriors of Waterdeep or uh, WOW Waterdeep, uh, depending on the um, uh, depending on the uh, the service. 
Great. So. And that's where all the news is, is coming out. Uh, and yeah, looking for, for more feedback over the next uh, couple of months and hopefully yeah. honing this into a sharp point to go exactly. directly into your exactly. But phone. you still safely. You know, you can handle safely. it. Safely. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to stab yourself with your phone. That's never no, a good thing. No, 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 no. That'd be bad. Yeah. Be bad. I've uh, tried. A yeah, we, of times. Have, uh, we have concept art previews. Uh, you know, so there's a, there's a, there's a fine line, right? It's Canadian soft launch. So we don't want to give away the store <laughs> during, over the course of the Canada. So we're saving some surprises, obviously, Neat. but there's, uh, some, uh, there's some previews. There's downloadable wallpaper. Uh, um, if I could turn on the screen that's behind me, uh, nope. Uh, there's <laughs> on the here, PC. just enter your password. No one, no one's watching. <laughs> <laughs> so one two that. three four five that's the same password on my luggage that's so weird oh, no, it's weird but i said it in french so it's completely impenetrable <laughs> nobody's gonna get it nobody understands french in this <laughs> world uh so there's um uh so we have uh, we have this you know giant red dragon logo we have wallpaper for your uh for your mobile devices and for oh cool or is a water that's great. I didn't know that. I'm going to totally download that. That's going to be fun. Yeah, go download it. And we have one of our uh, preview uh, preview videos, uh, one of our trailers on there, which is kind of fun because it was an old trailer video. So already I could, you know, I look at it. It's cool to look at, but I look at it going, oh, we changed that bit already. Oh, right. You know, these things are always, uh, always evolving. It's pretty cool. Totally ignore that one. That one's not there anymore. Yeah. That one's not there anymore. It's okay. We didn't like that color brown. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the little things that go into uh, uh, making or breaking some things is crazy. Like just like you're yeah, changing a color, and then all of a sudden people are like, "Oh yeah, this is a great, uh, uh, you know, dragon or something like that." If it just had a you know a little bit of a different shade on the pixels, and all of a sudden more people respond to it than other people don't. It's uh, it's it's wild how uh, how uh, fandom works. How just people perceive things and perceive value. It's hard to, it's hard to guess. And also, you know, we're super close to it, right? We're in the trenches making the, you know, making the game and, you know, uh, you know, living the dream a little bit. Wow. We get to play in this huge world. There's so much, there's so much stuff to do it. And yet always take, always uh, making the effort to, uh, to test it with other people, to take a step back and make sure that we're bringing new people in, right? Cause yeah. the, this game is intended to, uh, for, the casual uh, mobile RPG fan and to bring them into this cool world as much as it is to, uh, you know, sort of uh, highlight a different experience for uh, the established D&D fan. Nice. I love it. Well, thanks, uh, Steve, for all the great work you're putting into uh, making this game awesome. Uh, I can't wait to share it with more people outside of the North American amazing country of, of Canada. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I don't know. I hope your, your, your storm Kings thunder session uh, or, or campaign continues to go well. <laughs> don't read ahead or don't listen to dice camera action. Uh, uh, you know, season two, if you want to <laughs> avoid <laughs> spoilers, okay, noted. I'll take it. I'll take it off the, uh, I'll take it off the list. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for being on. I think you're actually going to be on uh, dragon plus soon. Is that right? With yes, Mark Carroll? Yes. Yeah, with uh, Mark Carroll, we'll uh, be on uh, we'll be on Dragon Plus, and we'll have uh, maybe some things to show. So that'll be pretty cool. Excellent. So uh, Twitch folks, I think you're, you're going to be on that tomorrow, or is that the next week? Uh, next week. Next week. Uh, so Twitch uh, listeners uh, or viewers, rather, uh, you'll be able to watch that next week. But those of you listening to this in podcast form, uh, you can go back and look at that video on demand in case you wanted to see uh, live gameplay in action uh, and or uh, some video trailers and some visuals from Warriors of Waterdeep, uh, which should be great. Cool. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Steve. And uh, right. we'll, we'll be in touch with you soon. All right. Au revoir. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. He said au revoir, which means something in ogre, I think. I think it's ogre. <laughs> I can't hear you. I can see you still, but I can't hear you. Uh, thank you, Twitch people. Uh, we are going to take a very short break and then get ready for Mr. Chris Perkins to come in and uh, uh, drop some lore bombs on us. Uh, I think we're only going to do, I think, two topics for lore. And uh, then we are going to get out of here around 430 and uh, kick it off for the Loading Ready Run crew, Dice Friends, uh, which should be a lot of fun. So I'll be back in here in just a couple minutes with Mr. Chris Perkins. Thanks, everybody.